Believed to be the most distant merger of massive black holes ever seen, JWST has recently made an incredible discovery. The telescope has seen evidence of a merger of two black holes in a system that existed in the early universe. The system that they're merging in can even be seen in a brand new image of at least hundreds of galaxies in space taken by JWST. Even with the impressive JWST, it's not possible to directly image black holes or even see the accretion disks immediately around them. It took a telescope the size of the Earth to see the shadows caused by the nearest supermassive black holes to Earth. And even then, the pictures are incredibly difficult to produce and are still pretty blurry. Trying to directly take images like these of some of the most distant known black holes would be impossible, even for JWST. Instead, the merger has been hinted at in this beautiful web image. It shows hundreds of galaxies on the black background of space, along with several bright Milky Way stars in the foreground with the large diffraction spikes caused by the telescope. Before we even get to the black holes, let's just take a second to enjoy this stunning array of galaxies. The shapes and colours we can see are amazing. And each one is beautiful in its own way. Hidden amongst them though is a particularly special system. It's the one that contains our merging black holes. They don't look like the animations we often see of merging black holes, or even anything like those Event Horizon telescope photos I just showed you. But let me know if you can spot the system we're interested in in this photo before I show you. It's small, it's red, and it's incredibly distant. The system already existed when the universe was only 740 million years old, which compared to the 13.8 billion years old or so it is now is an incredibly long time ago. The system has been named ZS7, and it may well contain clues as to how supermassive black holes actually get, well, supermassive. You see, we know of black holes that are millions or billions of times the mass of our sun, but we have no idea how these black holes actually get so big. We haven't seen enough evidence of how black holes could possibly grow fast enough to reach these sizes by today, or how smaller black holes can merge enough times to combine to be these masses either. That is, Perhaps until now, ZS7, the red blobby looking galaxy in our new image, shows evidence of hosting the most distant black hole merger ever seen, using an instrument on JWST called NERSPEC, which is a near-infrared spectrograph that can break down incoming light into its component wavelengths. This can help us identify specific elements and molecules inside a galaxy, and can even tell us about where things such as star formation, mergers, or growing supermassive black holes might be living in a galaxy. Specifically, the team that have made the discovery here have used the integral field unit capabilities of NERSPEC. This is a really awesome instrument that doesn't just take one spectrum of an object, but actually it takes a spectrum at every single pixel of an image. This is amazing and incredibly hard to do. This gives a lot of information about an object, and it can tell us about changes across an object, giving us more specific information, for example, about where star clusters are inside the galaxy, where stars are forming in the galaxy, and even where black holes might be. This means that instead of talking about a galaxy in general, which is a big place, we're able to see specific things happening inside the galaxy, and even say where they're happening in the galaxy. Using this tool allowed the team to find the black holes in ZS7 and determine that they are likely to be merging. So how do you spot a massive black hole in a spectrum, since black holes don't even give out any light to be broken up into wavelengths? In general, spectra look a bit like this, and the spikes in them tell us of the presence of a specific element or molecule. This is because each molecule will emit a specific wavelength of light when it gets energized from other radiation, so we see excesses of wavelengths that correspond to the present elements and molecules. For ZS7, we can see particularly large spikes at certain points. For example, this one. This tells us of a huge amount of hydrogen being energized, much more than could be explained by star formation or other common galactic processes. To explain these spikes, we need an incredibly massive black hole that is actively growing. A growing black hole is surrounded by a huge amount of material that falls into the black hole. And this material glows very, very brightly because it is very, very hot. 
As the material spirals into the black hole, it accelerates to very high speeds, and then the friction, as all of the matter bumps into each other, heats it up to very high temperatures. This then means it emits a lot of light and radiation such as x-rays as it's so hot. This radiation can then crash into huge nearby clouds of hydrogen, causing it to glow incredibly brightly and giving us one of these very large spikes in the spectrum. Other processes just can't heat up the hydrogen enough to give such big spikes. The fun extra complication though is that sometimes in these spectra we get a large spike that is a bit broader than you might expect. A bit smeared out if you will. It should be quite narrow because the hydrogen is emitting one single wavelength of light every time. So how does it get broader? A broader spike means we're seeing excesses in more wavelengths than we might expect. So how can this be happening? Well, this can happen if there's also hydrogen spiraling around the black hole, as well as in these larger clouds further out. This means that as the hydrogen is emitting its light, some of the spiraling hydrogen is moving away from us around the black hole, and some of it is moving towards us. The result is that light from hydrogen moving towards us is Doppler shifted into bluer or shorter wavelengths, and light from hydrogen moving away from us is Doppler shifted to redder or longer wavelengths. This results in a smeared out spike that is broader than the massive spike we talked about before. You often see a tall narrow spike, and around it a broader spread of wavelengths showing excess emission. You see both of them together ordinarily. The width of the broad peak then tells us how massive the black hole is at the center of it all. And using this information is how we found out that one of the black holes involved here is about 50 million times the mass of our sun. The final bit of fun comes from space dust in the galaxy too. It is always down to dust that we get an extra thing to talk about. You see, if there is a lot of dust near or around the environment of the black hole, it can block and absorb the light from nearest the black hole. And in this case, you might only then see the narrow peak coming from the hydrogen further out, and not see the broader peak from the hydrogen really close to the black hole. What's neat about ZS7 is that using the IFU on NERSPEC, the researchers here were able to see examples of both of these situations, offset from each other inside of ZS7. In one location, they could see both the narrow spike and the broader emission too. And elsewhere, they could just see the narrow band. This told them of the presence of two black holes in ZS7. The one with the broader emission is the one that is the mass of 50 million suns. And the other one is hard to weigh without the broader spike, but it's thought to be a similar mass. They believe that ZS7, as we're seeing it in this picture, is the product of a recent merger. And these were the two supermassive black holes at the centers of those galaxies. And now they're predicted to merge within ZS7, making this evidence for the most distant, inspiraling black holes ever found. And one day, these black holes will merge. One curiosity here is that ZS7 is a pretty low mass galaxy, at a similar mass to a nearby dwarf galaxy to the Milky Way, known as the Large Magellanic Cloud. Despite its low mass, the black holes whose mass we found, which is 50 million solar masses, is a lot bigger than the black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which is a much larger galaxy. Our supermassive black hole is called Sagittarius A star, and it's only 4 million solar masses, so much smaller than this relative behemoth. It's strange to see such a small galaxy with such a big black hole. We have just a small red blob in the image, but we're able to learn so much about it thanks to the incredible instruments on JWST. That's why I love these sorts of stories. I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions down below, and hey, if you're new, why not consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I do hope to see you on another video sometime soon. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!